This video is meant to be a primer for the core concepts of Fantasy Strike that the tutorial video doesn't explicitly cover. Some of these are mentioned in the character spotlight videos. There's a lot to cover, so let's not waste time. We'll be talking about move characteristics and the stages of the match. As much as I would love to get straight into the stages of the match, we have some groundwork to lay. The groundwork is move characteristics. Those characteristics are frame data, counter hits, combos, and priority. Starting with the most basic characteristic, frame data refers to the time associated with the three parts of the move. Each move is broken down into the startup frames, the active frames, and the recovery frames. In practice mode, all of these are given with the number associated with them referring to how many frames it takes. And since Fantasy Strike and the majority of fighting games operate at 60 frames per second, the numbers given are 60ths of a second. There is a set amount of time between the attack input and the attack being able to hit. These are the startup frames. The time period during which you can hit your opponent with an attack are the active frames. The frames after an attack can hit, but before control is returned to the player, are the recovery frames. Also given in practice is the frame advantage. Frame advantage is, on a hit, how many frames there are between the end of your recovery frames and your opponent's recovery from their stun. A block will always give a lower frame advantage. Frame advantage is given with a positive or negative number. A positive number is how many frames you have to act before your opponent while a negative number is how many frames your opponent has before you can act. Outside of practice, you can gauge frame advantage by looking at the hit spark, the flash when your attack connects. A blue flash indicates a positive frame advantage and a red a negative frame advantage. The larger the spark, the greater the advantage. A yellow spark shows a frame advantage of zero. It is possible to alter the frame advantage of a move. When you hit with a move, you always have to wait through the recovery frames, but you also have the active frames after you hit. You can increase your frame advantage by setting up an attack to hit meaty or at the end of its active frames. There are two applications of frame advantage. The first is to determine if a move is safe on hit or block. For a move to be safe, it simply means that the frame advantage is not low enough to allow your opponent to get a free hit on you. If a frame advantage is lower than negative 3, then you can be thrown out of your recovery. Spacing is also important when discussing safe attacks. Since it is possible to have an attack at less than negative 3, but either be too far away or knock the opponent away to avoid them punishing you. The second application of frame advantage is much more common. Combos are determined by frame advantage. Specifically, a combo is when an attack lands with enough frame advantage that the opponent has no ability to act before your next attack lands. Now onto the next part of move characteristics, counter hits. We needed to cover frame data first because a counter hit is specifically when an attack hits the opponent during the startup frames of their moves. In general, this results in a longer hit stun, though some attacks do have special properties to them. Almost all of the Gray's moves give benefits and combo opportunities off of a counter hit, through launching, bouncing, or juggling. But his most obvious benefit is his final arbiter, which does two extra damage on a counter hit. The last part of move characteristics is priority. Priority is how two moves interact when both are in their active frames. Priority is a soft concept, meaning that there isn't a hard priority number attached to the moves. When trying to determine if a move has high or low priority, you need to look at where the hitbox of the move is, where the attack counts as hitting on the screen, against your character's hurt box, where you, your character gets hurt, if they are in a hitbox. The further out your hitbox is from your hurtbox, the higher priority the attack is. A good comparison is Rook's two air normals. 
His rock punch extends down and out, away from his body, and is generally considered a high priority attack against a lower opponent. His body splash, on the other hand, has a hitbox that is right on top of his hurtbox, resulting in a low priority attack. Calling a move a reversal is essentially saying that a move has ultimate priority, as the reversals in the game render the character invulnerable during the startup and active frames. So we've covered a lot, but now we need to apply all of those characteristics into an actual match. We're moving on to stages of play. From worst position to best, the stages are Wake Up, Defense, Neutral, Pressure, and Okezeme, or Oki for short. Round one. We will cover Neutral first, as every match starts in Neutral. The neutral stage, as the name implies, is the stage of where neither character has a significant advantage. Much of the neutral strategy involves using low commitment, safe attacks to try and get yourself into the positive position. Some characters are stronger in neutral than others, either because they have safe, fast attacks that prevent pressure, or that they have a very easy time moving to an advantage. Geiger is the former character. His fast recovery on his gears, fast long range poke, and flash gear make it easy for him to keep his opponent from getting into their posi best position. Argagark has a very easy time moving out of neutral, as something as simply as an opening projectile will push his opponent into a disadvantage. Whenever the match is moved back into neutral, it is called a reset. Usually this is accomplished with an attack, such as Jaina landing a dragon heart. When you are in a neutral, focusing on ground attacks and pokes, you are in footsies. Next is the defense and pressure stage, which is a disadvantage-advantage stage, respectively. Pressure is the stage in which you are using attacks to keep your opponent blocking, trying to yomi, or otherwise guessing against your attacks. The first thing you need to know for this is the spacing your character needs in order to pressure the opponent. Each character has an area of the screen that they can dominate. Depending on the character and spacing depends on what pressure tactics you can use. Pressure tactics include zoning, frame trapping, cross-ups, and mix-ups. Zoning characters can pressure at range, using projectile attacks to keep their opponent on the defense, taking chip damage, or jumping into attacks. Most zoner characters have a strong anti-air attack that will punish attempts to jump over their projectiles. Zoning requires patience and will often frustrate players into making mistakes trying to break the zone pressure. Frame trapping is using an attack that intentionally leaves a gap long enough for your opponent to be punished by reacting. This is done by using an attack that has a slightly positive frame advantage. The frame advantage allows a second attack to be started and enter active frames just after your opponent leaves block hit stun. The goal being that they will try to attack or escape right into your attack, optimally for a counter hit. A cross-up is an attack that lands on the opposite side of an opponent. This makes the character turn around at the moment the attack lands and means that the defending player has to push forward in order to block the attack. The possibility of a cross-up adds a lot of uncertainty to defending. Mix-ups are moves with many possible outcomes. The goal of a good mix-up is to create a situation that allows for repeated attacks with multiple wrong guesses for the defending player. An important part of a mix-up are block chains. A block chain is a sequence of moves with high frame advantage to keep your opponent blocking with no real chance to lower the block, allowing you to determine at what point you can use your alternate attacks. For defense, an important concept is the fuzzy guard. This is when you switch your defensive option in situations where there is only one option for attack. One of the largest instances is when you are being pressured by jump-in attacks. By releasing back as your opponent lands on an empty jump, you can yomi a follow-up grab and still have time to push back if they follow up their landing with an attack. The last stage of the game is the Wake Up Okazeme stage. This is the ultimate disadvantage-advantage stage of the game. This stage occurs when one player has achieved a knockdown without resetting the match. The player with the advantage in this stage can set up any type of attack they want during the time the player is waking up. There are often combos that can only be pulled off during OK, either because the attacks need to be landed meaty, or the attack would be too risky to set up otherwise. 
During Okazeme, some characters have an option to trap their opponent in a wake-up state with a series of attacks. This is known as a Vortex. Rook especially is known for having a powerful Vortex. On Wake Up, your only chance is to guess right. Having a reversal is a huge advantage on Wake Up, but relying on it too heavily will give your opponent a large window to punish. The information in this video should give you a good step towards understanding Fantasy Strike. Most of these concepts should help specifically with how to use the moves of different characters.